Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of NCWA Pro Wrestling. This is Mick Karsh, and yes, once again, I slipped John Lloyd a couple of bucks, and here I am hosting this week's edition of the program, and an outstanding program it will be. A little bit later on, we're going to have Jim Mitchell himself out talking about one of the great names in the history of professional wrestling. I'll tease it a little bit. The man who made Milwaukee famous. That should tell you right there. We're going to talk about that gentleman with Jim Mitchell a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's kick things off. Great action as the Hollywood hitman faces T.J. Lightning. Uh, he's had a couple contract offers and there's way people are going to lose him. And of course, he's got that, uh, that fungus that he carries around with him. Look at a great maneuver. Look at this and the bridge. What a bridge that was, was he? A backwards bridge. This has been a seesaw battle right from the opening bell. Oh, thrilled him. Oh, man. Head first onto the floor here at the senior high school. I don't know if this kid can get back up after that. Oh, now Lightning follows him outside the ring, Jim. I don't like to see this. Oh. Right out of the ring, April. Gee. Come on, Carson. Get him back in the ring. Now, you know, as you sit here, Commissioner, you've mellowed in your old age. Once in a while during your wrestling career, you broke a rule or two. Never broke a rule. Oh, Jim. May have stretched a little bit. Never broke. <laughs> I've been known to stretch it. Oh, you're something yeah, all right. You're something all right. Oh, boy. I got news for you. This kid's going to clean his spot. Look at this great double leg sweep by the hitman. Now, oh. He's going to try to wrap him up in that Indian death lock, Jim, Let's if go. he can take him over the top. There it is. He's got him. Oh! It's all over. Come on, Bruce. Bring that bell. That reverse Indian death lock. I got my hand on the bell. I'm ready to roll here, waiting for the signal from referee Kreitzman. Oh! He ain't going to make it. He's not going to make it. He let go. Well, apparently, apparently he felt that perhaps he did not have it since on as well as he could. And now, wait a minute, Lightning, this could be a very, very serious mistake. He's taking too much time, Jim. Way too much time. Uh-huh. Look at him. Uh-huh. Halfway across the ring from uh -huh. eight feet in the air. Iris whipped across the ring into the turnbuckle. Boy, give these two young stars credit. They have done that. Oh, look at that young guy. He's going to climb up the top of the rope. Another mistake. I'm not sure he... I, well, let's see if he's in a compromised position. I don't oh, know. Oh, 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 he did nail him. I think in that instance... Kyle, no, 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 no. I think in that instance, Lightning may have been a little bit too far to the other side of the ring. But again, Jim, that's the experience factor. Yep. He was off balance up there. You can see that all yep, along. Absolutely. Oh, oh, right to the head. Oh, now it's a slugfest. Scientific wrestling has gone out the window. Oh, he's, got, he's got to roll up. Two, three. Oh, wait a minute. No, two and a half. Two and a half. Oh. I have called for three out there. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting yelled at. Oh, that's right, but I'll tell you. I guess that comes back to my old days of refereeing, too. Absolutely it does. At the St. Paul Civic Center. Many, many days ago. Beautiful oh. underhook, double arm suplex. And now again, look at this guy, Jim. The height of conceit. Every time he does look something positive. Oh, oh, please. You're not going to get the hitman uh -huh. that way. Just can you give me that roll over backwards and just try to pin him? Oh. Well, it's going to cost him. It's that simple. It's got to catch up with him. Oh, he spit on him, Jim. What a classless individual this, this guy is. This kid, I'm telling you, he's sticking right in there. I think he's going to take it. I just, I, I think this other DJ Lightning is just being too cocky. Ah! Oh, he telegraphed that one, Jim. There it he is. There it is. Western Come Union on. that time. Come right, on, guy. JJ, give it to him. You got to be unbiased here. <laughs> Try to be unbiased, Jimbo. Oh, oh right beautiful drop kick. That's got to do it. He's got to want. We have one minute to time limit, ladies and gentlemen. One minute left. If somebody can sustain an offense here. 
Oh, no. Great Frankensteiner. Oh, no. And a beauty. Hey, this could do it. Kevin one, two. He's got him. Oh. If this kid had some weight on him, that'd have been all over. Two and a half. It sounds like me, two and a half. <laughs> Wait a minute now. There it is. It's all over. Big power bomb. That's got to do it. Got to do it. One. Oh, man. That was a clear two. Get another near fall. 30 seconds to time limit. Both of these wrestlers have given it their all for 14 and a half minutes. What a match this is. It's a main event anyway. There's a block. There's a block by the hitman trying to... That suplex. Uh -oh. Look at that. Reversal. Come on. Two. They're not going to make it, Jim. No. Time ran out. Oh, my goodness. What a match this is. What a match. I, I tell you what I thought. J.T. two ways to build a body. This way, and this way. Anabolic steroids, another drug that can kill. The Minnesota Medical Association and the Minnesota Nurses Association, partners in care because we care. Well, Mick, if it gets dark out here, we'll have enough light with Hollywood Hitman's ring attire. John Lloyd here with Mick Hart, Jet CWA Pro Wrestling. This match, the Hollywood Hitman taking on T.J. Lightning. Well, T.J. Lightning, you know, we've been talking about egotistical wrestlers in this sport. And if they've bottled ego and arrogance, I guarantee you this guy has a cupboard full at his house. Who needs cologne when you got all that ego dripping <laughs> off of you? <laughs> That's it. The Hollywood Hitman, and ladies and gentlemen, if it sounds like heavy breathing on your TV set, it's the wind blowing here at Fridley 49er Days. It is cold out here, I got to tell you. I can imagine what it's like for these wrestlers bare skin in the ring. Has to be like these goofballs that, uh, that go dipping uh, into the ice water at Lake Minnetonka once a year when it's 30 below. You know, get into their skivvies and... and uh, and it, into the uh, into the drink. Well, I think T.J. Lightning was saying a few words to you. I couldn't quite hear him. I don't pay attention to him. That's the one thing I've learned. Don't listen to the guy, and eventually he'll go away. It's like a bee. Stand still. Don't don't uh, bother it, and it'll fly off. Well, I, quite frankly, Mick, I'd like to tell him to buzz off right about <laughs> now, but the match hasn't even gotten underway. <laughs> The Hollywood Hitman, long tresses and all, very colorful in that ring. The white and the blue of J.J., the Hollywood. Oh, wait a minute, over the top, leapfrog. Look at the speed of the Hitman, again over the top. Look at this series of maneuvers. Now we got a crisscross going. The Hitman and Lightning, nice reversal into the, oh, into the hip toss. And T.J. Lightning already seeks the safety of the ring floor here at Fridley City Hall. Well, J.J., the Hollywood hitman, has a little change of heart over the past couple of weeks. Now he's got the fans behind him, and they are definitely helping him out here in this match with T.J. Lightning. T.J. Lightning, the arrogant one, the pouty one. Now look at him. He went wait in the ring, and now he bailed out again. Oh, wait a minute. He's, he's going nose to nose with some of the spectators here. He probably figures he has an even chance of knocking one of them out. Better odds that he's got in the ring with the hitman. Well, Mick, you keep setting me up for those one-liners going nose to nose. That's not something I want to do. Oh, my. <laughs> PG-13, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bringa. That was no lady. That was my wife. Okay, <laughs> here we go. NCWA Commissioner Jim Mitchell to be commended for putting on another great evening of wrestling action. Fridley 49er Days, the annual event. Always a great success. Professional wrestling, just one part of many activities involved with 49er days. And now TJ Lightning putting the bad mouth on the hitman. Oh! <laughs> he tried shoving him, that was a mistake. There's that, <laughs> there's that flying bear. Now he's got TJ in the corner of the whip across. Oh! 
upside down in the corner, over the top, onto the ring apron. And back in, nothing but net, as Michael Jordan and Larry Bird would say. Who? Ah, uh, it's a commercial, Nick. Never mind. <laughs> I'm too busy following wrestling, John, to have time for the other sports. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And a lot of wrestling action taking place in the ring. J.J., the Hollywood hitman, and T.J. Lightning. You know, T.J. told me that T.J. stands for technical genius. However, wait, Mick, wait, wait a minute. Technical genius, that's what I said. Genius with a J. Somehow, I don't think he's too technical. Well, something's missing there. I don't think the uh, the bundle of newspapers wrapped too tightly there. Irish whipped off the rope. Nice drop kick to the sternum. Delivered by the hitman. And now look at this now. T.J. Lightning, who about two minutes ago was really putting the bad mouth on the hitman, is now backing up, calling for a timeout. Five minutes into this match. Five minutes. We had an opportunity between matches to talk to the one, two, three kid just back from a very successful tour of Japan here watching the NCWA superstars. There's a great suplex by the hitman, count of one, two, not quite three. A lot of neck strength involved there with that bridge, Mick. Two count, but somehow TJ able to get out of it. Oh, what a chop. You know, it hurts now, and it'll hurt him tomorrow morning as well. Wait a minute now. Lightning thought he was doing something smart, but he caught a double judo chop right to the forehead for his trouble. Well, that is not a very well-executed cover, unfortunately, by the hitman right there. Kind of lackadaisical. Fans, we've got to go to a break. We'll be back with more of this match coming up after this. Control over the hitman, but the hitman tried to fire back, catches the knee to the solar plexus. Big body slam. You know, Mick, we were talking about luminaries early on. I just noticed that Thunderblood Charlie Norris has made his way upon the scene here to watch the NCWA. And look over in that far corner. Is that Sid Hartman sitting there? Kind of uh, looks like him right by the just to the right of that light. It's either Sid Hart. Yes, I believe it is Sid for crying out loud. It's either Sid Hartman or Carl Polad. What I'm not sure <laughs> who it is. Then again, it might be Al Darusha. We never know where Al's going to turn up. You mentioned Thunderblood Charlie Norris. Charlie has just signed on with World Championship Wrestling. Congratulations to the Native American from Red Lake, Minnesota. You know, every time I see Charlie Norris, he looks bigger and oh. bigger and bigger. He's definitely bulking up, and he will be a challenge for anybody in the, in the WCW area. Back to the action in the ring. There's a reversal by T.J. Lightning. He's got, oh, man, he hung him on that top ring rope. You know, he always asked me how it was. I think it stunk. I think he stinks. If he's looking for approval from me, he's getting peaches from the wrong tree, John. That's right. We're not here to give approval to the wrestlers. We're here simply to call the commentary, you know, the play-by-play, -play, if you will. Like, I have to agree with you, Mick. That stunk. You can crush someone's larynx with maneuvers like that. Oh, and he's proud of it. He's proud of it, posturing to the crowd, arguing with the front row ringsiders when he should be attending to business because the Hollywood hitman can pin you at any given moment. It only takes three seconds, and you're looking up at the lights. Oh, big clothesline. TJ Lightning deliver that from midway across the ring. Perhaps he's got the hitman where he wants him. Well, there's nowhere to go in the uh, corner. You know, once you get thrown into the corner, you can't bail out. TJ caught him with that clothesline. Didn't quite get all that standing drop kick, though. Big body slam. Oh, and now he signals to the crowd that it's over. He has no doubt in his mind. He's got his man in a compromising position, ready to be pinned. Here he goes, look at him, looking at the crowd, smiling. There, you got what you deserve for crying out loud. There's a shot at all the way across the ring. 
as the hitman. If he can garner enough strength, if he can summon it up, dig down deep and fire back here now. Great suplex in for the cover, count of one, two. He bridged, didn't quite hold him for the three count. Now the Hollywood hitman going up top. TJ Lightning is staggered. We've seen a lot of these high risk maneuvers out of the Hollywood hitman. Cross body, wait a minute. The momentum took him over. He's got the tights as well. It's over. Just like that. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner in this contest, T.J. Lightning. Well, Mick, you saw it. I saw it. The fans here at ringside saw it. Let's see if we can get a replay show just how T.J. Lightning used the tights to defeat the Hollywood hitman. Let's go to the replay. Well, the momentum took him over the top, John, but apparently he didn't think he had enough momentum. Now watch right here at the two count, a yank of the tights, that additional insurance policy, and T.J. Lightning comes up with a very controversial victory, but nonetheless, it's in the record book, in the, in the W column, T.J. Lightning, the victor tonight over the Hollywood Hitman. The action continues from Fridley 49er Days with the NCWA. Mick Carson, John Lloyd coming back at you in seconds. Stay with us, everybody. Hi, this is the Hollywood Hitman. Lately, there's been a lot of things going on in the life of the Hollywood Hitman. I recently got back from a successful tour of Portland, Oregon, Wrestling for Championship Wrestling USA. That was a very successful tour, and it was a good experience for me. Uh, I also came back to the state of Minnesota, and I am now a happily married man. But all the time through this, through this, all this that's been going on, I've had a certain person on my mind, and that's T.J. Lightning. Uh, I wrestled him in Shakopee. We went to the time limit. Um, I gave him a good run for his money that night, and I know, TJ, you thought, thought that I almost had you that night, but you got out of it because the time expired. If I would have had five more minutes with you, I would have pinned you. Anyways, the next time at Fridley 49er Days, which you just saw the tape of, I got cheated. TJ uh, was up to his own tricks again. He's pulling my tights, and the referee obviously didn't see that. I got pinned to the mat one, two, three. I can deal with the loss, but the next time we step in the ring, TJ, I'm going to pin you. I might just grab your tights. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm a pretty fair guy. I don't stoop to levels like you. But anyways, the rumors have been flying around that lately, that there's going to be a date coming up pretty soon that the NCWA is going to be wrestling in a town around here. TJ, I want you to sign an open contract to wrestle the Hollywood Hitman, and I will take you, and I will pin you to the mat. One, two, three. We'll settle this feud once and for all. Everybody, this is the Hollywood Hitman coming at you. TJ, you sign that contract, buddy. I'll see you in the ring. What's wrong, Vince? My woman's done left me. My dog ran away. And people still aren't wearing their safety belts. Ah, oh, Vince, you singing those buckle up blues again? Some people don't wear their seat belts. I can't believe it's true. Those kind of people get knocked right out of their shoes. So buckle up, baby. Don't sing me those buckle up blues. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. I mean it, baby. Buckle, honey, suckle, buckle, yeah. All right, everybody, here we go with this week's edition of Wrestling Flashback, and I've asked my good friend Jim Mitchell to join me for this segment. And, Jimmy, we are going to talk about one of the true legends in the history of professional wrestling, and I know somebody that was a very good friend of yours and still is to this day, and I teased it a little bit earlier on, the man who made Milwaukee famous, that can only mean one man. The Crusher. Absolutely. One of the greats in professional wrestling history, particularly here in the Twin Cities area in the AWA from the 1960s right through the 1980s. Long before there was Hulk Hogan, Jim, there was The Crusher, the original house cleaner. The one and only The Crusher. And you know, I felt to get in place, he always wore one of those big suit coats. You remember that? Absolutely. He always had that blue suit coat or a navy blue, something like that. So I went out. And I, I, I won't tell you where I got this, but next week you're going to know where I got this suit coat. That is a very expensive-looking coat. I mean, for I don't want to look at the label, but there must be a fortune invested. Well, the guy who has this, you know, he retired. He can afford these kind of things. We can't. 
All right, I'm getting an idea who it might be. Again, let's talk about the Crusher. As I said, from the 1960s here in the Twin Cities area, right through the middle 1980s, Jim, and the Crusher, of course, did not always garner the favor of the fans for many, many years initially. He was as hated as any man in wrestling. Well, you know, he was probably one of the most hated men that I ever met in pro wrestling at one time. And then all of a sudden it came around that uh, he was a favorite. And I, I, don't, I don't know why. Do you? Well, Crusher used to explain it that the fans finally, he actually grew on the fans, I should say. He never did change his style over the years. He certainly didn't kick any less or gouge any less. But over the years, he just developed such a phenomenal fan following. And I referred to him as the original house cleaner. Whenever there was a, a wrestler running roughshod in the Twin Cities area, whether it was Larry Hannig or Harley Race or eventually Jerry Black, well, you name it, the call went out to the crush, and he answered the call. Well, you know, he's like, to me, he was like an old vacuum cleaner. He just plugged it right in, and they all sucked right in. They were all done. Absolutely. And, of course, Crusher now retired, living very, very well in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So many battles that Crusher had over the years, and I know, Jim, you've been following this sport as long as I have, and that's saying an awful lot. Name some of the memorable opponents that you recall Crusher going to war with. I can remember, like, one of the major ones I had was Dick the Bruiser and uh, the Crusher against Dan Kowalski and Tiny Mills. Murder Incorporated, one of the greatest tag teams there ever was. But, again, you have to look at the Crusher and Dick the Bruiser. They were the fans, you know, the fans loved them. But Stan, I won't say any more about it because he hates it every time I say that's what he is. Stan the Kowalski, that's it. Well, I'll tell you something. This, this has been a long-running issue with Crusher Kowalski, and we're going to talk about that with him at a later date. You and the Crusher, I know some of those fishing trips that you and Crusher and Al Darusha and our good friend, the late Wally Carbo, even the fishing trips are legendary. Yeah, well, everywhere we went, after the wrestling, after we went on hunting trips, fishing trips, he was a champagne man. He had to have that champagne. He didn't touch the, the hard stuff, but there was two things he loved in life, and that was the booze of beer. That was it. There was nothing else. Booze didn't matter. Beer and wine was his two favorites and drinks. And ladies and gentlemen, we saw the Crusher in the Twin Cities area. The matches that come to mind the most were his battles with Mad Dog Vashon. Now, I know, Jim, eventually they became tag team partners down the road. I don't know if the two of them mellowed. It was more that they had a common purpose in mind. But there was more blood spilled between the Crusher and Mad Dog Vashon than perhaps any two wrestlers in history. Well, you've got to remember that you've got all these different types of people that wrestled out here. I always thought they were lunatics. They were basically crazy. They're off the wall. But if you can get those guys to stay in one area and work together, they, they could make the greatest teams there ever was. I didn't care who it was. You could take Hans Schmidt, put him with uh, Stan Kowalski. You can put him with Tiny Mills. You can put him with the Kamakops. You can put him with the Crusher. The Mad Dog, it didn't matter who you put them with. They were professionals. And if they made up their mind to work together as a team, they were the greats. And Crusher was one of the best to work with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, certainly all of us in the Twin Cities area miss those days when he came out with that keg of beer on his shoulder. That was his road work, too. Crusher made no bones about the fact. That's the way he trained. Well, I'll tell you, in 1960, we went to one of the University of Minnesota's football games, homecomings, and the Crusher had his great big keg on his shoulders, and I had to, you know, bring him there. And my gosh, you talk about the fans of the college. He was loved by young, medium, and old. They all loved him. He Ab was the greatest. Absolutely, and the Crusher and Wally Carbo. You talk about the two Pollocks, and they made no bones about the fact those two, and Wally was no slouch himself. He could party with the best of them. When Crusher and Wally got together, it was something else altogether. Let's roll out the barrels. That's what the whole thing was about. That's what it was. The girls and the beer. That Wally and the girls, that's another story. Could talk hours on that. Ladies and gentlemen, reminiscing this week on Wrestling Flashback about the man from Milwaukee, the one and only, The Crusher. Today, our water is in danger. We can't see it or taste it, but America's groundwater is being contaminated by chemicals, fertilizers, and household trash buried in landfills. Before you put anything in the ground, ask yourself if you want it in the water that you drink. To protect your groundwater and your health, call 1-800-882-8289 for a free groundwater information packet.
one. Oh, Stryker just cold slide him over the top rope. Oh, my goodness. Stryker just flew over that top ring rope and cold slide TJ Lightning. Wow, TJ is hurt. But Stryker very slow to get back up to his feet. Looks like that maneuver may have cost Brett Stryker more as he flew over that top turnbuckle and it hard on the hardwood floor. Now TJ sets him up. Uh oh, Stryker puts on the brakes. And Brett Stryker suplexes TJ. Referee Al Alberti counting on both wrestlers. But Stryker gets to his feet. Now on the whip, TJ goes across. Flying drop kick there. Oh, what a maneuver there. A head scissors into a takedown. Now Brett Stryker going up on a top rope. He's perching high. Oh, got a by body press. Oh, TJ reverses it. Oh, no. for the flying body press. And he caught TJ, but TJ rolled him over. And now we've got a fan at ringside trying to get involved with the action. And now a police officer is gonna escort that fan out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your winner TJ Lightning. All right, everybody. It has been another great week with the NCWA, and I invite you to join us next week. We will take you to an outstanding confrontation between the masked professor and Horace, the psychopath from Fridley 49er days, and what a match that was. And also, in studio next week, one half of the very first AWA World Tag Team Champions Stan Crusher Kowalski, I get a little nervous every time that guy comes around. Until next week, everyone, body slams and pinfalls to you and yours. This is Mick Karsh for the NCWA.